from stampwithjen.com and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make this pretty card with a 3D shadow effect on it. Otherwise you're going to need the parcels and petal stamp set, specifically the flowers and a saying. For ink I'm going to use Versamark, White Craft and Petal Pink. Use some basic stamping supplies. For papers I'm going to have a piece of white that is 8.5 by 5.5, a quarter sheet of petal pink, some ribbon, some gold embellishments, and some items for embossing, including embossing bunny, some gold embossing powder, and my heat tool. So using the stitch shape rectangle framelits and my stamparatus. To start, I've cut a little couple little templates. One is one inch long, and one is just one eighth of an inch less than one inch. So I'm going to start with that, and it's quite a thick piece of um, uh, cardboard that I got from my designer series paper, thick enough that when I pull the petal pink paper over, it doesn't uh, slide. It holds it in place. So I'm now going to position the stamp where I want it to be. So I want it to start here on the edge, and I'm going to push my plate down and pick up that stamp. Next, I'm going to take my petal pink ink, which is the same as the paper, and I'm going to ink that stamp up. Now you might notice that I've got the stamp set case in behind, and that just gives the surface of the stamp an even surface. So when I ink it up, the ink is even across the stamp. And then I'm going to pull that out. I'm not going to remove the stamp. This is key to this technique. And then if you wanted to stamp a second or third um, image, uh, card, then this would be the time to do it while that stamp is still in the right position. So you're going to put that in. And then the next step uh, after you clean the stamp, because we're now going to switch colors, and I'm using my foam pad here to clean this. Next step is we're going to remove the cards and I'm going to change my template out. So I'm going to now go to the slightly smaller template and this is so that I can move the card over just an eighth of an inch, no further, but that the stamp is still in the same place and that's the key for this technique. So now I'm going to make sure everything's secure and then I'm going to ink up the stamp with the Whisper White Craft ink. And you want this to be quite well inked up, almost like it's a painty look on the stamp. And then I'm going to stamp it down, pressing firmly again. And then when I lift it up, it gives you that 3D shadow effect. And it's just simply because the stamp has moved over just a little bit. Isn't that cool? So again, this would be the time to do any second images or third images by doing the same thing again, inking up and pressing down. And if you miss at all, you can always add more ink. You can see that that, that that wasn't inked enough to really give it a good look. You really want it to be quite inked, inked up. Like I said, it almost looks like paint on there when you ink it up really well. And that gives more of a 3D pop. There you go, isn't that better? Very cool technique. Now that's this ink is wet. It's a craft ink and so it has a long drying time, perfect for embossing. So I'm gonna make sure that I don't touch those as I'm working here. So next I'm going to clean the stamp because we're switching colors again. And so I'm using a baby wipe first because like I said, this is quite painty and it's gonna really muck up my sponge cleaner if I don't get some of that off first. So I'm using a baby wipe because then I can just throw this right in the garbage. And I've got quite a bit of uh, inky paint all around the surface so I want to get all rid of all of that and then I am going to follow up with the other half of my sponge mat you might notice that I cut it in half there and just because I want this to be really clean I don't want to put this in my petal pink ink again with white on it so I'm going to change out the template again back to the one inch and make sure it's tight into the corner I'm going to grab, grab my first card because hopefully it's a slightly more dry than the one I just did. And this time I'm going to position the stamp again where I want it to show on the card. So what I'm doing is building a little border across the bottom. So that looks pretty good there. And then I'll use the Stamparatus plate to pick the stamp up again. And then I'm going to ink again with Petal Pink ink on the Petal Pink paper. 
Now what I forgot to do before I started this was to add a piece of scrap paper underneath because now the stamp is hanging off the platform. So I've now cleaned that and I'm adding a piece of the little Stamparatus grid paper so that um, the cards don't get all mucky as I work. So I'm just repositioning everything. As long as you don't move the stamp itself and you're using a template guide of some sort, this technique will always work. And then it's just a matter of making sure everything's um, tight up against the edges that you've positioned. And then it's just repeating each of those steps. So every time you go to change the ink, you need to change the template into the smaller template. So I'm just going to speed this up as I finish stamping both of these pieces. And you can see it's actually pretty easy to stamp multiples and to stamp a lot of them fairly quickly. What I like about this stamp set for this technique is it's a filled in image. It isn't perfect, it's a little muted so that helps with the technique. And the dots on the image also help with that whole 3D look. You can see here before I, I move the paper over how small of a gap that really is between the two different templates and that's how you get that shadow image. It's just slightly offset and the Stamparatus makes this so easy to do. There it is all finished and it's still wet so I'm going to put that aside to dry while I clean up and get ready to emboss. So the first step is I'm going to rub my stitched rectangle with the embossing buddy to get rid of any extra embossing powder and I'm going to use a coffee filter to collect the embossing powder and then funnel it back into the container when I'm finished and then I can just throw away the coffee filter. So I've uh, stamped this saying with the Versamark ink, which is a sticky ink, and I'm rubbing the, sprinkling the embossing powder over top. I've got one little smudge on there, so I'm just going to use my take a pick tool to pull off that little extra bit of powder that's on there before I pull out my heat tool. When you're using a heat tool, you may want to let it just heat up for a minute before you start to hold it on your image. And it's very hot, so you want to watch your fingers. It's You want to hold the heat tool on the image and emboss one part before you move on to the next part. And you'll see it turn from that dull brown kind of looking uh, embossing powder, especially with gold, until it turns shiny. And really, you've just got to hold it in the right light in order to be able to see that change. And like I said, it does take a few minutes for the gun to warm up before you start to see it change. Once you've turned the paper back and forth and you can see that everything is gold and shiny, you want to stop heating it or you're going to scorch your paper. Now my work surface here is a little bit dusty because of that powder that I spilled. So I'm going to take one of my favorite uh, products here and it is just an air duster from um, a local uh, supply store and I've just brushed away any of stray embossing powders. So I'm going to take the card base now and I'm going to fold it in half using a bone folder to get a nice sharp crease. And then I'm going to have a look here and see if this is dry. Now, again, this is a white ink and it takes a little while to dry. So one of the things you can do if it isn't dry yet when you're ready to put your card together is to heat it up with the heat gun and just take a few minutes to dry that ink. Once it's dry, I'm going to add the ribbon to the front of the card. Um, I'm going to just cut a piece that's just a little slightly bigger than the card front. And this is petal pink metal edge ribbon. For a full list of all the supplies that I'm using here today, click in the link below in the video description and that'll take you right to a post on my blog, stampwithgen.com, with all the items that I've used today listed. So I'll put a little bit of tape on the back in order to hold the ribbon in place and just wrap that around. And then I'm going to add more tape in all of the corners and position that on the front of my card. So now I'm going to take the saying that we've embossed and I'm going to use these mini dimensionals and put them on the back of the saying. I'm using the mini ones because I want the dimensionals to sit on either side of the ribbon 
and not be right on top of the ribbon so that it actually doesn't rock. And I'm going to put lots of dimensionals on here again with the idea that it's not going to rock. I want them to be placed on either side of the ribbon. So they'll kind of catch the ribbon a little bit, but they won't. If I put the three big ones in the middle, it would have rocked a little bit on that ribbon. So these mini ones are better for this application. And you can put it anywhere you want. I'm going to kind of cover up that little gap right there and just make sure it's centered before I press it down. I really like how the gold embossing matches the gold edge on the ribbon and I like that the 3D shadow effect is really the star of this card but I wanted to bring through that gold a little bit more so I'm using these metallic pearls in my take your pick tool. I just uh, um, wheeled up some fresh putty there and I'm going to add these onto the top of the card where it's a little more blank. And when you're adding any embellishments like this, you want to kind of do a bit of a random pattern. I try to think in like triangles. And you also want to do odd numbers because odd numbers always look better um, with anything like this. Now I decided I didn't really like where that pearl was, so I um, moved it over. Actually, I lost the pearl and I had to uh, grab the little piece of glue up. And again, take, take your pick tool to the rescue. And then I just moved that one over a little bit. So there you go, I'm finished the 3D shadow stamping technique card. I hope you enjoyed this and you'll give it a try. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe below and check back to stampwithjen.com often for other tips, tricks, and ideas. Thanks so much for watching.